Hello and uh, welcome to my first uh, review and tutorial of Bird Journal version 5. Um, little disclaimer, I'm nothing to do with Bird Journal. So let's get started and download um, Bird Journal if you're doing it for Windows. There are iOS app and Android apps that run in synchronization with the Windows version. So you, you um, can update from any version to any version through a cloud system. I won't patronize you if you know how to download uh, software and install it. So let's get started. Okay. First thing you'll come to when you start Bird Journal after installing it is the create an account uh, page. I've already done this, uh, but what you would do is um, enter your details, um, at which email address you're going to use. And then the password, make one up or one you have ready. You would click create an account and the first synchronization would be a, um, an initialization which sets up the database online for you. Once that's happened, you'll go straight into Bird Journal and it will tell you you can start adding your entries. So I'll sign in and it um, takes me straight in. Now there's obviously nothing in here at the moment. There's your summary, entries, gallery, species and location. Um, the first thing I like to do is add locations because once you've got the locations in, you can start putting your entries in at the, from those locations. So on your menu bar at the top here, if you click locations, and there's nothing in there obviously, click new location. Now although I'm in France, I'm going to change this to United Kingdom um, and you somewhere I know that you may recognise. I'm going to go Sandwich Bay because that used to be my patch when I lived in the UK. Sandwich Bay. And now you can geotag that if you wish. Um, if I put Sandwich Kent, England, click there. Here's Sandwich Bay. So I can um, just click anywhere in there at the moment because that's Sandwich Bay. So there will do. Click OK and you have your geotag. You can put some notes, um, what sort of um, place it is, there's a bird observatory there and that sort of thing. Now because it's hierarchical, Sandwich Bay has different locations uh, which are used mainly for ringing purposes but uh, it tells you where the birds have been as well. So for instance if I change this to Sandwich Bay because it's now in our drop down as we've added it and put in one of the places, the Haven and then add another new location still at Sandwich Bay and put uh, the gullies and what you can do with this is when, because it's a hierarchical system, you can also add somewhere within the gullies. Uh, there's Big Gully. And one more, um, um, I think it's uh, the Willows or Little Gully. Let's put Little Gully. Okay, so <clears throat> as you can see, you can do that. And this is really useful for... Um, if you want to use this as a uh, piece of ringing software as well, obviously where uh, the birds were caught. But once you've got your uh, your um, uh, locations put in there, let's add one more actually, uh, back at Sandwich Bay, and we'll put St George's Bushes. Okay, once you've got them all in there, you can then um, save those. Now you've got your uh, locations in and it synced the changes. So that's all in there up on the uh, cloud. You can start putting in new entries. So start with the date. You can go back if you're adding old entries, you can go way, way back. Just keeps going on and on and on. But let's just stick to this date at the moment. I'm going to change this to, uh, uh, no, I'll tell you what I'll do. I'll put um, the gullies in say this is one place I was there. Uh, the weather you can put in you know uh, sunny, hot, whoops if I could spell it be good, uh, and the temperature so it's 26 C or something. Uh, you can add a photo of the location if you've got them for reference purposes. Um, you can add notes and say um, this say was bird race or something uh, 2016 it wasn't but um, <laughs> so if you had say six on your team or something 
you can put protocols if you have things like eBird accounts when you can update air information, say it was an area account or casual observation or stationary account. So if you put area account, um, you can then put the effort area in acres, um, you know, for when you upload um, to those things. But if you just put casual, it's just, you know, you don't have to put anything, but it's there if you want to for uploading information to as an instance bird eBird. Uh, you can put that <coughs> all the ob observations were done by all of these six people or if you leave it blank then you know that they weren't always there. So we can then go to um, putting in uh, an observation so let's say uh, spotted flycatcher and here you can add how many you saw so that it was just the one on this. You can time put the time of the actual sighting if you keep that sort of record. You can geotag the sighting. And here you can add photos, which I'm going to do. So um, I'm going to add photos of, uh, I, I don't know why it's in an egret folder at the moment, but it is, of my spotted flycatcher. And what I like to do is put a caption in. Uh, and I have this thing ready just for speed because I like to put in the name and the Latin name and you do it for both photographs. You can put in what you like and you can add the time of the photograph and geotag the photograph again as well. Um, and it works the same way as when you geotag, say, Sandwich Bay. So uh, we say it's the gullies, which I think are um, somewhere around here. So if I put the gullies in just there, say, you can geotag that and say the time was... Um, 1300 and you can click OK like that. You can put the start time of your whole observations. Let's say we started at 0700 and we finished in the afternoon at about 5 o'clock. <coughs> so uh, here you can put in um, the views if, if it was heard only or good views and obviously we had photographs so good views. We'll put in next observation here and we'll add uh, Barn swallow. Now, say we saw about 30 going over, so we can put 30, and you can even put uh, plus, you know, if it wasn't an exact count. Um, we can add the photos like that, and we can go back to the place where we got the photos. I've got a few here, just to show you can add as many as you like, really. Um, I'll grab my quick paste for all of those. You can put different captions for different photos, obviously. I just tend to put all of that. Um, these have already got a time because they were timed on the photograph. Um, add that. You can put some notes saying, say, uh, uh, flying south. If it was the end of the year, Vismig. just for an instance. Um, good views, obviously we had photos. Um, next observation, and we can put in, say, uh, corn bunting. Uh, count of one, got a photo, there it is. Add my caption. Okay, uh, good views. Now, once all that's done and you're happy with your uh, entries, otherwise you can go on and on and on, obviously, and you would save. So, now you've saved and you can sync that. It bounces up and down when it tells you it needs to be uh, how to sync. Okay, sync changes. Now, if you say, for instance, you wanted to add one more entry um, at a different place even though it was at the bay and I wanted to put in um, for instance um, the haven and say it's very unlikely I'd see it at the haven uh, I'll forget the weather and that now just to save time um, but if you wanted to put in um, grey heron whoops grey heron Count of one, add my photo. None of these were actually seen where uh, I'm saying they were seen. It's just uh, for demonstration purposes. Um, 
get my grey hair in there. Caption, me, click OK. One more there, sorry. Click OK. Um, same date. Um, doesn't matter about the time on this, so you can put it in, obviously. Good views. Um, save. And because it's on the same date, um, it will show up on here as the same date. So you've got those. Now you've got those entries done. You'll have your photos in the gallery like this. Grey heron. Uh, you can search by species. So grey heron. And there, and then um, you can click on those and it will take you back to the gallery for them. You've got photo information down here if you need it. Um, you will show you by location, so you can actually search species by the location you're in. And you've got a summary of what you saw today and the last seven days. Obviously, this will change as you put in new species. Now, a um, little note on some of the things here. In the library, uh, these are all that can be installed that exist as taxonomies. You have some that were already installed, and I've actually entered some already, but you get um, the major bird ones, uh, um, Wold, IOC and Clement, if you install those. Updates will be here if there's anything to be updated, and this is where you can customise or add custom um, taxonomies and checklists of your own. So um, I won't do this now, this will be for a later video, but I'll just show you that you can basically start a new taxonomy checklist um, from scratch or from copying from existing, which then you can rename and edit for yourself, which is very useful. Um, and you can create new ones for, say, instance, um, you have specialised subject like microscopic pond life or something, you can start your own taxonomy for those. Um, you have a few tools. If I go to entries here, you see here there's nothing. But if you go to settings, this will actually come defaulted on, but I've taken it off. And if you save, you have lifers here. Um, so obviously, if you're entering a, a new one, you want lifers. I don't use it for the simple reason that I'll show you in a later tutorial, a more advanced one, that I... Um, put in my own um, properties for the entries, um, which I'll show you later. And I do um, a drop down for myself called um, year tick and life tick so that I can add them to the individual entries uh, that I want. Um, I suppose once you have all your accounts in, the earliest one will be the one with life and then you can re reactivate those um, those two um, checkboxes for lifer and um, uh, year species. Uh, you've got some tools for export, for instance, um, if you wanted to export and you wanted those two. Um, at the moment, it's only got bird journal format because I haven't entered that I want to put them to um, uh, things like uh, um, eBird, but that's uh, for a later date. Um, uh, you can um, do a backup. You can download all photos, um, so you can work on Bird Journal offline. So when you go offline, they'll all be downloaded in your gallery. Um, um, you can um, upload database just in case you need to at any point. Um, as I say, you've got your settings and your sign out. I tend not to sign out on my own. Um, so I always do a quick sync just before I leave in case I forgot to. Um, that's pretty much it for the moment. I know it's fast and furious, but uh, I'm trying to beat the um, YouTube clock <laughs> to keep it in the 10 minutes. Um, uh, sorry it's a bit uh, um, haphazard, but it's my only my second YouTube video, so I'm, I'm trying to get better at it. And I'll do some later um tutorials with more advanced stuff like adding um, entry properties and stuff and how to use graphs, maps and reports. Okay, I hope you enjoyed it. Um, if you like it, thumbs up. If not, thumbs down. I don't mind. Um, but that's the first one and I hope to see you soon with some more.
Cheerio.